When Jesus Christ walked this earth almost 2,000 years ago, he spoke about a kingdom, the kingdom of God. Now, you don't hear about it much today in our churches or seminaries or religious television programs. Yet when we look at the Bible, the kingdom of God was the central theme of Jesus' message and that of his disciples and apostles. They mention it over and over and over. What is the kingdom of God? The answer is simply shocking and shockingly simple. And it can change your life. You need to know. And you will, starting right here in 30 seconds. Greetings and welcome to Tomorrow's World. My name is Wallace Smith and I'm very glad you're here. In today's Christianity and in churches all over the world, preachers, pastors, and priests are talking about Jesus, who they think he was, the story of his life as they understand it, the miracles he performed, some of the things he said or did, his crucifixion and resurrection. But are they preaching the same message that Jesus Christ himself preached? You know, he walked among humanity for three and a half years preaching and teaching, bringing a message directly from God. Is it the same message that we hear today? The fact is, and we will demonstrate this, that Jesus didn't come mainly to talk about himself. The heart and soul of the message, preaching and teaching of Jesus Christ was about the kingdom of God. Now that might surprise you because we don't hear too much about the kingdom of God today. And yet it's mentioned around 150 times in the New Testament alone. You know, too many people let others tell them what the Bible says without checking it up for themselves. And I encourage you today not to take my word for it. Check up on me. Look at these things yourself. See if what I'm saying is actually in your Bible. Right now, let's take a sweeping survey of the ministry of Christ and of his disciples. And let's see for ourselves. In the book of Mark, in chapter 1, we read of the very beginning of Christ's ministry, right after the imprisonment of John the Baptist. Here in verses 14 through 15, Mark writes, Now after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Jesus came preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. In fact, look at Christ's statement in the book of Luke. In chapter 4 and verse 43, Jesus makes a very explicit statement about his very purpose and his mission, why he was on earth in the first place. In this passage, we read what he said when people were trying to prevent him from leaving and going into other towns. In verse 43, we read, but he said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities also, because for this purpose I have been sent. Jesus tells us that his purpose, the very reason he was sent by God, was to preach about the kingdom of God. Consequently, the four Gospels are full of teachings and parables from Jesus Christ about the kingdom of God. Rather than spend the next five hours reading all of those, let's turn to a passage in the book of Acts that I imagine will surprise many of you. Many people don't know this, but after his death and resurrection from the grave, three days later, Jesus did not go up to heaven immediately. He actually spent about 40 days, almost six weeks after his resurrection, teaching his disciples, preparing them for the work of spreading the gospel that Jesus Christ brought to the earth. What did he teach them about during those six weeks? In Acts chapter 1 and verse 3, we're told that after his resurrection, Jesus presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. That's how important the topic was to Jesus Christ. And his disciples took his instructions seriously. Consider the famous example of the Apostle Paul. Acts 14 and verse 22. 
pictures him speaking of the difficulty of entering the kingdom of God. Acts 19 and verse 8 says he spent three months in the synagogues of the Jews, reasoning and persuading concerning the things of the kingdom of God. Acts chapter 20 and verse 25 shows him testifying to Christians in Ephesus that he has been among them preaching the kingdom of God. My friends, the list goes on and on and on. Even at the very end of the book of Acts, we find Paul in a state of house arrest and receiving visitors. And what is he doing there? Let's read it in Acts chapter 28, verses 30 and 31. Then Paul dwelt two whole years in his own rented house and received all who came to him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching the things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no one forbidding him. The message is consistent. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. The testimony of the Bible is unanimous in deafening the message of Jesus Christ and the message of his church must be about the kingdom of God. But what does that mean? What is the kingdom of God? Now, if you're like I was some years ago, those words may be new to you. This may be the very first time you've even heard of the kingdom of God. Others of you may have heard it before, but already have an opinion. Some think the kingdom of God is the church. Some think it's heaven. Some think the kingdom is the spreading influence of Christianity across the globe. And still others think the kingdom of God is a, a motivating sentiment in your heart. You know, if you grab three or four Christians off the street, you'll probably get three or four different opinions about what the kingdom of God is, if they've even heard of it. But Jesus and the apostles clearly knew what they were talking about. And if the kingdom of God is so important that Jesus Christ, the Messiah and Savior of all mankind, sent by God himself, said that his very purpose on earth was to preach the kingdom of God, then I dare say we need to know what it is. Opinions and the imaginations and theories of men aren't going to cut it. We need to know the truth. What is the kingdom of God? As always here on Tomorrow's World, our approach to understanding the truth is to go to the Bible. There are too many ideas out there that are called Christian that have nothing to do with what this book actually says. And that's why we challenge folks here. Don't believe us. Believe your Bible. And if we, what we say doesn't match the Bible, then turn us off. Change the channel. Don't listen to us again. Check up on us. And as we go through the Bible today, you'll see the kingdom of God is not a metaphor or some fuzzy spiritual idea or feeling, that it's not heaven or not the church. Rather, what we'll see is it is a real world-ruling kingdom just around the corner that Jesus Christ is bringing to this earth at his return, a kingdom that will span the entire globe. He and his saints, those who've loved him, who have followed him before his return, will rule all peoples and nations in power and glory on a beautifully transformed earth, this earth, bringing real peace, real prosperity, and real hope for the first time to mankind. In particular, we'll see that the kingdom of God is like all real kingdoms and will consist of four essential elements of a kingdom, a king a territory, laws, and subjects. But before we get started, I want to give you an opportunity to request the free book that we're offering on today's program, The World Ahead, What Will It Be Like? You know, too many settle today for fuzzy and vague beliefs about the future, their future and that of their family. Some Christians believe that Jesus will come back, but they don't know what will happen after that. And perhaps you wonder that yourself. This beautiful, full-color booklet gives you powerful, detailed descriptions directly from the Scripture of the marvelous world that lies just ahead of us. You need the incredible information this booklet will give you. Be sure to request yours today. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-718-4800. That number, once again, is 1-800-718-4800. Call now or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227.
With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World. Call now. Welcome back. In the first part of our program, we made it clear that Jesus came to teach us about the soon coming kingdom of God. But what is the kingdom of God? If it's a literal kingdom, then it must have four elements, as we mentioned earlier. A king, a territory, laws, and subjects. Let's consider the first element, the king. It may come as no surprise to you that the king of the future kingdom of God will be Christ. He will literally rule the world. Let's turn to an Old Testament prophecy about Jesus Christ found in Isaiah chapter 9. You know, people often get so sentimental reading this passage that they don't actually pay attention to what it says. Here in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 through 7, we read of Jesus Christ. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. Did you catch that? The government will be upon his shoulder. This isn't a metaphor. Christ was born to rule. Let's continue. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. King David ruled in Jerusalem over a real kingdom. As did David, Christ will rule in Jerusalem at his throne over a real kingdom, but this time a kingdom without end. Indeed, he will be, as he is called in Revelation 19 and verse 16, as well as elsewhere, king of kings and lord of lords. But he will not be ruling alone. For instance, in Matthew 19 and verse 27, he tells his 12 apostles that they will be ruling under him in the kingdom, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And even more than that, each and every Christian who has suffered and struggled in this world to overcome sin and follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ will directly rule the world under Christ as well. I know that sounds incredible, but we see that this is the plain teaching of Scripture. Don't let some other preacher try to turn the plain teaching of the Bible into metaphor and symbolism. Don't let them do that to you. When I am called before the throne of Christ one day, I want to be able to say that I took him at his word. How about you? Let's read that word and learn an amazing truth. And while there are many verses we could turn to, one of the most explicit statements about the coming rulership and authority to be given to God's people and the followers of Christ is made by Paul in 1 Corinthians in chapter 6. He begins here in verse 1. Dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to the law before the unrighteous and not before the saints? Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world will be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Do you not know that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? The saints will judge the world? Judge angels? What an incredible destiny is ahead for the true followers of Christ. The reward of the saved is not an eternity of luxury on a, a cloud with a harp. It is ruling tomorrow's world in glory under Jesus Christ. And note that. What did Paul say the Christians in Corinth would one day rule? He said they would rule the world. And here we see the second element in the kingdom, the territory. The saints will rule the world under Christ. That's this world, not up in heaven, not some other dimension or some fuzzy feel-good kingdom in your heart. I know it's hard to unlearn some of these things. If Paul's not clear enough for you, let's look at a straightforward verse in Revelation. Actually, it's one that we've already mentioned today. 
In Revelation chapter 5 and verse 9, we read of a song being sung to Christ in heaven concerning the future kingdom that he will establish. And they sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth. My friends, it doesn't get more straightforward and plain than that. Those who follow Christ now shall reign on the earth. In fact, if we go back just a few chapters in Revelation to chapter 2 and verses 26 and 27, Jesus says explicitly to those who follow him, overcome with him, and keep his works to the end, to him I will give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Note, power over the nations. That is authority on this earth. Is Jesus Christ lying to us? Is he saying something other than what he really means? Why can't people just trust the Bible for what it says? That God intends resurrected, glorified Christians to rule on earth shouldn't come as a surprise to us. Many of us, whether we're familiar with the Bible or not, and whether we're Christians, atheists, or something else, are familiar with Jesus' promise recorded in Matthew 5. The meek shall inherit the earth. Looking at all these verses, and there are so many that we are skipping for the sake of time, doesn't it make a light turn on in your mind? Sort of like, oh yeah, Jesus Christ really did mean the meek would inherit the earth. These things are so clear, but they must be read and studied with a mind that is willing to learn and to discard old ideas about what we think the Bible says, and replace them with the things that it really does say. If you have such a mind and you are someone willing to read your Bible and believe it, then you are going to be blessed beyond measure by the booklet that you're ordering today. The mind-numbing details about the incredible world that Jesus and his saints are going to establish on this earth will simply fill you with more excitement and hope than you thought possible. And in these times, who among us does not need more hope? Well, we've covered king and territory. Let us now look at the third element in a kingdom, laws. The scriptures make very clear from beginning to end that the future kingdom of God will be ruled by the laws of God embodied in the Ten Commandments. So many sincere but very confused religious teachers will tell you that Jesus somehow did away with his father commandments, but this simply is not so. For example, you can read for yourself in Matthew chapter 19, verses 16 through 17, how Jesus Christ replied when a young man came up asking how to receive eternal life. Christ answered, if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. And in the kingdom of God, when Jesus Christ has subdued the entire earth and rules it from one pole to the other, we see in scripture that everyone will seek to keep those laws. Look at this beautiful description in Isaiah chapter 2. When people from all over the globe, which are the subjects of the kingdom of God, which is the fourth element of a kingdom, people from every country on earth streaming to Jerusalem to seek God and understand his ways. We read about them in Isaiah chapter 2, starting in verse 2. Now it shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow to it. Many people shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways and we shall walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Now here in America, we are busy trying to remove the Ten Commandments from our buildings of government and power, while God promises that he is going to establish those same commandments over the entire world. And what will be the result of this? This tired and weary world will finally know peace, real peace, lasting peace. Read this in the very next verse. He shall judge between the nations and rebuke many people. 
They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. The message of Jesus Christ is one of real, concrete hope for the world. And the booklet we are offering today for the first time on television will show you that world in inspiring detail, taken straight from your Bible. Education, agriculture, government, religion, family life. We know Christ is returning, but what is he going to do with the world when he gets here? What will living in that kingdom be like? Now, one reader in Canada wrote in and said, Today I received the booklet, The World Ahead, What Will It Be Like? by Mr. Roderick C. Meredith. It is truly an inspiring message for a very needy world, which will bring much hope to the thousands of individuals who will read it and realize that a much better world is indeed in store for humanity. Another reader in Dayton, Tennessee writes, I received my copy of The World Ahead, What Will It Be Like? I have had a hard time putting it down. It is so uplifting and encouraging. You need to learn what they already know. In a world where so much is going wrong, you need the beautiful, life-changing description of the world Christ is bringing to us just around the corner. Your copy is already paid for and is ready to be sent to you free and without any obligation whatsoever. Request yours today. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free, no cost, no obligation, if you call this toll-free number, 1-800-718-4800. That number, once again, is 1-800-718-4800. Call now or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World. Call now. Welcome back. We've been talking about the kingdom of God and the incredible time that is coming when that kingdom will rule the earth. That is the message of the Bible. No matter how many people try to ridicule it, no matter how hard those with fancy titles and degrees try to put it down, it is the truth. And it is at the very heart and soul of the message that Jesus Christ brought to this earth. To abandon that message is to abandon the very message of Jesus Christ himself and to ignore what he preached in order to preach a message that we like better. But we will not do that here on Tomorrow's World. Christ has commissioned us to preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. Not a gospel about Christ, but the gospel of Christ. The world that Jesus Christ will establish at his return and that will spread to cover the entire earth will truly be amazing beyond comprehension. His saints will rule with him for a thousand years, reigning in power and glory alongside him and finally teaching the world the truth that has been hidden from them by Satan the devil for so long, including the remarkable purpose of man and the way of life that truly leads to life. But you don't have to wait until that time. You can begin to learn the purpose of your life now. You can begin to live God's way of life now. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 39, Peter said to those gathered in Jerusalem at the very first sermon of the church of God, The promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. I know that there are people all over the world viewing this program right now. I know because so many of you write into us each week and request our literature or request a visit with one of our ministers. God is calling some of you listening to this message today. Of the many people who've been watching this program today, some of them have turned the channel. But you are still here. Perhaps what we've said today has touched on something you've always wondered about. Or perhaps it's brought to your mind and heart things that you've never thought about before and you want to know more. 
that is the beginning of a call from God. And if he's calling you, you want to act. You can begin a completely new and more dynamic walk with God right now today. Psalm 34 and verse 8 tells us to taste and see that the Lord is good. And you can begin doing that today. In his word, God describes a way of life. A way of life designed to bring us the sort of life that he wishes for us. We don't have to wait until the coming of his kingdom to personally experience families without strife, families without confusion, and families without heartache. We can experience those things now. We don't have to wait for the return of Christ to allow him to live his own life in us, to produce the fruit of love and peace in our lives, to make us blessings to our families and to those around us, to create within us everything God would have us to be. And those who are willing to come under his gracious and loving rule in our lives now and today will very soon have the chance to spread that gracious and loving rule throughout the world under the direction of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, reigning with him as kings and priests, glorious and powerful sons of God throughout all eternity. For those with eyes to see, that day is on our very doorstep. If you really want to learn about the world that Jesus Christ will be bringing to this earth, the wonderful world that his saints in this age will then help him to rule and administer for a thousand years after his return. Don't forget to call or write today and request our brand new booklet. Where most of the preaching in this world about this topic is vague, this booklet will be incredibly specific and more hopeful than you can imagine. Be sure to come back next week where Roderick C. Meredith, Richard Ames, and the rest of us here on Tomorrow's World program will once again delve into the amazing truths of the Bible that you won't hear anyplace else. Take care. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-718-4800. That number once again is 1-800-718-4800. Call now. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. To view today's program, order the free literature offered, or for more information on today's vital subject, visit us online at www.tomorrowsworld.org. The preceding program is produced by the Living Church of God.